So menus are probably the most critical element to your online presence for your food business. So that's why at Flipdish we've built a comprehensive menu management system in the Flipdish portal. So in this video we'll cover how to create a menu and some of its basic options. So when you first sign up we generate an example menu for you so that you get an idea of what's possible with Flipdish. Um, we can have a look at that menu here, if we click this menu button here on for this, and this is the menu that will be assigned to this particular store. Or we can also click on menus here. And this will show us all the menus we have at the moment, we just have one. And by default, the first menu that's created will be assigned to your first store, which in this case is called, is called Yay Lunch for me. So let's click in and have a look around. So the first thing you'll notice at the very top is the menu name. So at the moment I have this called Your First Menu. Um, let's call this spring menu. For this store we're going to have seasonal menus. And you can see that to save that I just simply clicked out of the input and everything was auto-saved. So next we can see the stores that the menu is assigned to. As I mentioned this menu is assigned to Yay Lunch. Next we have the shortcut links, for uh, the section shortcut links I should say. Um, and you'll probably notice by now that this menu the, the menu layout here is very similar to how it's laid out on your actually actual website too. And that's that's intentional so that you can see as you make changes here, you can see how it would reflect on your website for your customers. Next, let's look at the section over here on the right. So we see a toggle here that says lock for editing. So if we hover over the information toolbar here, we can see that only owners can lock or unlock a menu. An unlocked menu can be edited by a store manager or a store owner, but they cannot unlock a menu if it is locked. So that sounds a little bit complex, but basically, as a uh, an owner, when you sign up to the portal, you are given the, uh, the role of owner. So you own everything. You can do everything. You can see all reports. You can... Um, refund orders etc. You have access to everything. But in a later video we'll go over teammates and when maybe you want to invite some store staff and you don't want your store staff to be able to change the prices on your menu for instance. So in that case you can lock for editing, lock this menu for editing. And what that means is that anyone who does not have permissions to edit menus uh, will not be able to actually edit the menu. Um, so it's handy if you've got a um, maybe you've got a few stores with a number of different layers of uh, of staff that should have access to some things, but not everything. Next, we have some menu options. So the first toggle here is allow only allow one expanded section at a time. If we toggle this on, you'll see that all the sections close except one. So this can be useful if you have a really long menu with lots of different sections and lots of different items. The page on your customer facing site can get really long and a bit difficult to navigate. So some clients like to have the option where the user can only have one section open at a time and that's what this allows. So let's say I want to look at starters now. So starters will open but coffee is now closed. So it just can make the experience, the ordering experience, a little bit neater and cleaner and stop the massive, you know, the endless scrolling up and down the page if you've got a very large menu. The next option then is hide hidden sections and menu items. So again, this can be handy if, let's say, you have a lot of menu items that are hidden. So to hide a menu item, we can simply come here and we can hide indefinitely, let's say. If this item is now hidden, let's say I, I'm not doing salads, super salads for the next three months. I can just hide it so that it's still in my menu but it's actually not, uh, not uh, it can't be ordered by your customers. Um, so there can be scenarios where you have lots of these hidden items and it can get a bit uh, clunky to, to navigate your menu. From the edit, from this editor I mean your, your customers will never see these if they're hidden. Um, so we can toggle that on and then our hidden items are no longer visible in our menu. Next, we have a man the Manage Tax Rates option. So, in this section, we can add tax rates that will be applied to our menu items. I won't go over this right now. It's kind of a, it'll be a video in and of itself, but I just want you to know for now that this is where you would manage your tax rates for a given menu. So, we've got our spring menu here, but what if we want a summer menu? So, if we go back to the menus page, 
we have two options. So we can either click New Menu down here in the bottom right corner, or we can duplicate our existing menu. So this is really useful when your new menu will share some items or sections in common, or if they share tax rates, they'll also be copied over to your new menu too. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll duplicate our spring menu. So here we have our spring menu in brackets copy. If we click into it, we can rename this like we did before and just simply call this our summer menu. And there we go, we've now got a summer menu and a spring menu. So our new, or sorry, our new menu currently has no store associated, so it's not currently in use. Uh, our store Yay Lunch is still using the spring menu. But we can change that if we go to our store settings and we go to our general settings. Down here you'll see a menu input, a menu drop down, sorry. And here we will see all menus that are available in your profile. So currently we have spring menu, we can set it to be summer menu and everything's auto saved. Now our store is using our summer menu. So if we go back to menus, we can now see that the summer menu is the active menu on Yay Lunch, and spring menu now has no store associated. So maybe we don't want our spring menu anymore. It's not assigned to any store. It's just getting in the way, cluttering up our workspace here. So we can actually archive the menu from here. And what this does is it basically just simply removes it from the page and you'll never see it again. Um, that's important. You will never see it again. It will be gone forever. If you think you want to use it in the future, you can just leave it there. There's no harm in leaving it there. So if we click Archive, that menu is now gone. One thing to note about archiving a menu is that you will not be able to do it if the menu is currently assigned to a store. So if I try to archive this menu, you'll get a message saying that you cannot archive the menu because there are stores using this menu. That would break the, uh, the ordering process for your clients. So we don't allow that. Um, if you want to uh, archive a menu, then you will need to assign a different menu to this store. And that's it for introduction to menus. In the next video we will look at adding menu sections and menu items, adding uh, names, descriptions, prices, etc. and images.